In the sequence of Surya Namaskara, the sun salutations, we have these two key movements where the body appears to float towards its next counter position. Controlling those movements will feel really good because it tends to be the case that that silky sort of floaty aesthetic will come only when there's harmony between the breath, the movement of the body and the energetic locks within the body. So what you get is this external display of internal synchronicity. The body engages in this sort of dance with gravity, ultimately being overcome by that grounding force, but only on the specific terms of the body as it lands exactly in the position which is your next counted vinyasa. So for Surya Namaskara A, air come, inhale, raising the arms, look up to the thumbs, Dwe, exhale, folding forward, hands down, head down, Trini, inhale, head up, straightening the arms, and here the weight is distributed between the hands and the feet, but really the vast majority of it roots down through the feet, and to control the jump back, we'll have to carry that weight in the hands, so shift it forward with the shoulders ahead of the wrists, push through the arms like you're pressing the floor away from you, fingertips grip the mat to control, and as the feet lift away from the floor, elbows bend with control. Think about taking more weight forward to counterbalance the weight of the legs reaching back all the way to the point that you're landing in Chatwari. That feeling of control comes from balancing your weight. So as you lean more weight forward, you're giving yourself permission to take more weight back. And the moment that you lose that balance and you have too much weight behind your foundation, which is the hands, then you're coming down much faster and harder on that side. With these clips being kind of slowed down and broken up, it might be a little bit difficult to really get a sense of what this movement is. So here it is in real time. And once again, and that's it. It's really nothing too fancy. You don't need to get super stiff. You don't need to pike up or hold at the top. For the purpose of Surya Namaskara, this will feel really good when the body and breath are just allowed to move freely in synchronicity. So you don't need to create blockages or breath holds or unnecessary stopping points along the way. So on that starting point, which is your Trini position, ideally you'll have the hands lining up right beside the feet. Perhaps the knuckles of the hands aligning with the knuckles of the feet if you have the flexibility for it. But that's not that easy to get a sense of your weight moving forward into the hands from this position because they're so close to the feet. So what might be easier if that's the case for you is to just use the subtle modification, placing the hands slightly ahead of the feet, lean forward, and if needed, just give yourself a little hop not with the intention of going straight back, but try to find that balance point. Try to control your way down by leaning forward as you reach the legs back. Over time, you'll be able to slow this down and really refine the landing, but only if you practice towards finding those balance points. Don't just think of it as jumping your feet from the front of your mat to the back, because then you'll always be coming down quite hard with the landing of the feet. Now, from your solid chatwari position, Pancha, inhale, roll forward over the feet, shut, exhale, press back. And after your five breaths here, Sapta, crouch, bend your knees, drop the hips low so you get to a position of power in the legs and head up to see where you're going. Inhale, spring forward, straightening the legs and squeezing them together. Once again, the shoulders come forward past the wrists and press the fingertips into the ground to control so you don't go too far forward. So Sapta is the same position as Trini, head up, straight arms, straight back. Ashtao, exhale, folding forward. Nava, inhale, hands up, and exhale, samastitihi. I'll show you that jump once again in real time. And so the key component here is Uddiyana Bandha, drawing the lower abdomen in, tucking the tailbone, allowing the lower back to round, and it's facilitated by a deep exhale on that crouch position. Notice here that you've pressed all the way back. You're on the balls of the feet. The legs are coiled, ready to spring. And if you just press sort of halfway back to this kind of weak all fours position, here there's no power in the legs. There's no rounding in the back. There's no bunda. So you'll want to press all the way back, load up the legs. This is a bit like the movement of the tide, just pulling all the way back and then accelerate forward, lifting through Uddiyana Bandha and inhaling as you land the feet carefully between the hands. All right, sweet. I hope that helps. Practice it carefully, practice consistently, be very mindful of these movements as you go through. You've got a few chances to practice them in your sequence and um, just putting that effort in on a daily basis is really what's going to get you there. Hope that helps. Subscribe for more videos. See you in the next one.